Uh, I'll share a few things with everyone. First, I'd just like to thank all of our attendees who came and showed up today and all of your insightful questions that you put into the chat. Um, and of course, our speakers who came, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise. Today was very illuminating. I'm sure everyone will agree that it gave us a lot to think about and also broadened our awareness around a lot of issues that I don't think are commonly known. Um, that really connects to how I became interested in the space in general, which I think, you know, should be kind of apparent as a female person. But, you know, a few years ago, when I got out of a long term relationship, I, I sought out my mentor's wife, who was a reproductive endocrinologist, just to sit down and chat with her about fertility things, because I was 30. And I was like, well, I don't really want to worry about it. But I don't want to be ignorant either. And I sat down and I was in my um, PhD for molecular biology, human biology and translational medicine. And what I found in that meeting was that I knew almost nothing <laughs> about the reproductive system, my own body, how all this worked, what sort of options were available, what were some of the questions I should have or be thinking about. And you know, one of the themes that certainly came up during our sessions today was that there are so many unanswered questions and even the things that we do know about often aren't known by women or, or by men either. I mean, it's important for men to know these things as partners um, in this sort of conversation. So, you know, we created this summit, um, Jenny and Gina and I have been working hard on this in part because we want to create energy around this. And, and to Jennifer's talk earlier, we want to enable cohesion. We want to enable community. We want to create an ecosystem where we can have these conversations and identify champions and really empower the players who are both driving the science, but offering the treatments and also um, putting together the patient groups that are going to support each other and engage in advocacy to get their needs met because a lot of, you know, a lot of this area is really just significant unmet need that has historically been um, under resourced and, you know, it's not just fertility or menopause, it's really women's health overall. I mean, it wasn't until the early 90s that the NIH required inclusion of women in clinical trials. It wasn't until 2016 that um, the NIH, which is the largest funding body in the United States, required the inclusion of female animals in basic preclinical research. And so what this means is that so much of our medical establishment, biomedicine, and what we know about health and well-being is derived from male bodies and male animals. And so I think that there's a lot that we stand to learn when we really open up our inquiry and include female animals, but also female humans, um, not only in the studies that we run, but also in the questions that we ask. And a lot of this, I think, is about asking questions, interesting questions that deserve answers and that will really uh, empower and support, you know, 50% of our global population. Um, and in doing so, we'll really empower women to have lives that are fulfilling beyond just uh, creating a family and having children, but also for their careers and also after menopause, being able to really engage in their life and well-being in a way that is, um, you know, not riddled with debilitating symptoms. Um, and so, you know, this, this summit is really in honor of that vision. And, you know, we really thank all of you for being part of that. Um, I think what's really exciting about what we covered today in part is hearing some of what's on the horizon through our startup panel, uh, hearing from Gabby and from Colin about the work that they're doing that's really pushing the boundary. You know, next week, uh, for those of you that can join us, we have a really excellent, um, very stacked schedule with some of the leading scientists and entrepreneurs in this space. We'll be talking about stress and nutrition and the environment, um, vaginal microbiome, uh, steroids and ovarian aging, things that are actionable today, things that are sort of coming down the pipeline in terms of new research um, or new therapeutic options that are going to be changing our ability to interact with both fertility and menopause and, and women's health overall in a way that again, we really hope will we'll empower people to live lives that are you know, full of more potential and hopefully less pain and stress. Um, so, you know, I, I'm really excited about this. I think today was really, really wonderful. And uh, we really look forward to having all of you next week and everything that will come from that session. <laughs>